Hello. Most of my audience will know of Autometer as an aftermarket instrument gauge manufacturer, but my guest today is here to talk about test equipment in general. Hello, Zach. Hey, how are you doing? Thank Good. you, man. Thank you, man. Um, introduce yourself and your background a little bit with uh, Autometer, and uh, we'll go from there. Sure. So my name is uh, Zach Salpatic. I'm the Autometer's sales team. Um, I actually came up through Autometer Tech Support Customer Service Team. Um, got really familiar with the products there. And like you said in your your introduction, um, most um, most people have heard of Autometer and their their high performance gauges. Um, and I'm actually involved. Uh, I'm one of the only only salesmen involved on, with both our high performance uh, gauges um, and the high performance line as well as our, our test equipment line. Um, so I'm, I'm the first one cross trained on both. So uh, obviously familiar with the high performance stuff that everyone knows, and you know happy to to promote the the test equipment. Not so many people know about, but uh, lives up to the same same quality expectations you would expect from the gauges. Cool. So how long has uh, Autometer been in the test equipment, and how did it come about? So that's a, a good question. So we've been in for a while. Um, we started with our carbon pile testers, and let me pull up the exact year for you because I don't want to get anything wrong, but we've been in, I want to say since the 70s, we started making our carbon pile testers, uh, specifically our SB5 at the time. I mean, it was a, it was a huge hit in the tester market because it, it applied a load test as opposed to, to a conductive test, which lets you get a, a much more accurate reading and, and a state of health on your battery. Um, and so we, we really developed that, that carbon pile technology and then we decided let's piggyback off of, off of this and we've implemented that, that same load testing technology into, into a variety of different testers, both benchtop, handheld. Um, our most recent one actually is a, is a tablet tester, which is, is two parts. And so we've been around for, for a little while and, you know, certainly our, our test equipment, we've really broken through. Uh, popularity-wise, I uh, would pass, you know, 20 years. Okay, perfect. Um, do you think with the EV market becoming more mainstream that Autometer feels that this will be a new market segment that uh, you guys can uh, take a lead in? So that is a great question. It's something that comes up a lot. Uh, actually, it comes up a lot on both the high-performance gauge side as well as the test equipment side. So this is definitely something we've looked into. I mean, we acknowledge that where the future is going. Everything's going to be, be electrical vehicles now. Unfortunately, what we discovered looking into it was that while we have test equipment now, it's not as simple as just kind of upgrading what we have or modifying it. It would actually essentially be a total new product build um, top to bottom um, as if we were introducing a new product uh, just like any any new startup company. So unfortunately, there were just too many differences between, you know, the way you got to test electric vehicles, the way their their electrical systems are set up, um, that it's just not compatible with with what we have, and we would have to kind of do a ground up design on a, on a brand new brand new tester. Yeah, and that kind of kind of like uh, like another conversation I had earlier today, but maybe it may also apply to you. Um, obviously, some OEM manufacturers <laughs> uh, are very proprietary about who can have access to their systems. Do you see that being a problem? Um, as far as uh, just having access to kind of the specs on the electrical system, is that what you're referring to? Uh, that or whatever you guys need to do to be able to create a product, validate it on their systems, if that makes sense. Um, sure, sure. Yeah, so um, luckily, uh, which is this is actually one of the advantages of our, our testers is that we take care of most of most of the information we need for an accurate test we handle with the tester. It applies the load, it walks you through the test, and um, it goes through everything. So really, all we need right now on, on current vehicles is just the battery information. We need to know CCAs um, if you're measuring for that, um, just the specs of the battery to enter in, and then a temperature reading. I mean, all that information is, is usually on a sticker on the battery in the vehicle. So for right now, that's that's really all the, the vehicle-specific information we need. 
um, going forward with things kind of integrated into vehicles. I know we have a couple of units that we have we have worked with um, specifically. Um, you know, we have a new unit we're working on that that's a vehicle that uh, have a vehicle reset um, for for you know uh, manufacturers like BMW. Um, so we've worked with them before. I um, mean, luckily for our test equipment side, as we're kind of getting our feet wet with OEMs, we have experience with that on the high performance side. So okay. we've worked with OEMs before. I mean, we made the the Ford GT gauges, so we have experience with that. So that gives us a little bit of an advantage when uh, breaking the OEM wall with test equipment. Okay, uh, that's interesting. Also, to know about the Ford GT. Uh, I may go off a little bit later in the conversation on something on that aspect a little bit if you can. But uh, sure. let's. Uh, Going there. So, do you see the uh, market opportunity for supplying independent repair centers or shops with your test equipment going forward? Yeah, I think it's- yeah absolutely. And that's that's something that we we do now. Um, okay. I mean, we are Daimler North America. They just made one of our testers their official um, required diagnostic tool, where we. Um, are the official tool that Penske fleet uses, Ryder, Pepsi fleet. Um, so we're all, all over the place with the big fleets. And then, of course, the smaller shops, um, we're getting involved with them too. Um, you know, making sure that we, we offer the different, uh, for example, a Penske, a Penske needs a much different tester than, you know, uh, your local, your local family owned, uh, repair shop. So right. we just always want to make sure that we're offering something for everybody, and we really try to get to know our, our customers a little bit before we just sell them on something, because we want to make sure they are getting the right the right thing for them. We don't want them to have to be paying for features they don't need, and we want to make sure we get them something that's going to accurately do everything that they need it. Right. Okay. Um, so that's definitely cool. So normally, if in better times. You and I both would be right now sitting on the convention floor in Las Vegas, but we're doing this now virtually, I guess. Um, so what kind of other new products were you guys planning on introducing this year uh, that you want to talk about? So the big one on the test side, which we have up, I don't know if you, you saw or if there was a way for you to show that. I mean, I said you had a YouTube channel, but we have a video up of our, our new BVA 360. That's, that's the big new, new tester. Um, it hasn't officially been released yet uh, to be available, but um, it's certainly something we're working on. It'll be ready uh, sometime at the beginning of 2021. Um, it's our fastest, most advanced tester that we have. It can do a battery test in, you know, under 40 seconds. You can do a full system test in less than a minute. Um, so you're just, you're hooking it up to, to your car battery, and it's testing everything for you in less than a minute. You're done. Um, it's got a full digital display. It looks the center of it looks very similar to your average smartphone. Touch screen, okay. very easy to read. It walks the, the user through the test, so you don't have to know anything about running a, a full system test on your vehicle. Um, you just hit full system test. It'll tell you exactly what to do. Hook the clamps up. It'll show you a picture of roughly what it should look like on the average vehicle. Walks you through every single step. Something goes wrong. It walks you through how to fix it. Um, until you get the right results. Oh, perfect, man. Uh, cool. Um, not sure if, uh, since you said you were like one of the guys that automated this cross train for both test and the high performance, and so maybe I can address this next question to you. When I was looking at some of your press releases on, on your guys' uh, well, automator page for your announcements, one thing that caught yep. my eye was your guys' Envision dash for the 80 seven through 93 Mustangs. Sure. Yeah. We have a couple of different Envision dash models and those units have just been a wild success for us. I mean, we obviously designed them. We had high hopes for them, but you know, it's really been just blowing it out of the water. Customers love them. And, and we're just really happy. We offered a product um, that feels perfect for what customers were looking for. And we were able to help them with that solution. Um, what questions specifically did you have on it? Well, I'm assuming right now, like the big trend right now, I guess, within the, you know, if you want to call it hot rodder or the car community is a lot of guys are obviously retrofitting their older Mustangs with the Coyote motors. And do you see this as a, uh, 
ideal too because at least right now the common trend is from all the conversions I've seen that being done, they're all using one of your competitors' gauge clusters for the swap setup. So I'm wondering if you think this will be a good contender uh, alternative to going against your uh, the competitor. Sure. Yeah. I mean, this unit uh, for that that Mustang that you're referring to, we have a direct fit unit. Um, it's made uh, to the exact spec of the OEM dash. So you just take out the OEM dash and then pop ours uh, right in. It's going to look clean. It's going to fit well. It hooks up the same way uh, a standard set of gauges would for us. Um, so it'll come with the sensors, and then you just wire from the sensor to the to the back of the unit. Um, it's got a, a beautiful digital display, easily controllable by a, a small little joystick on it that looks no different than your odometer uh, clear stick that you would normally have on your dashboard. Um, and my favorite thing about the dash, personally, is, you know, it's, it's a great unit, but I like to refer to it as a living unit. It's got a USB port on the side of it. And as we come out with new dash formats, um, new updates for it, you would just plug it in. You could just download those right off our website onto a, a thumb drive, plug it into the side of the unit, and you get the latest updates. So just because you bought it day one and then we came out with updates, you know, two weeks later, you don't miss out on those. Um, once okay. you get it, you'll get everything that we release later. All right. That's kind of cool because I saw I was like – Watching the product videos, and I'll probably be airing some examples of the, from some of the footage I downloaded uh, during the video portion of this interview. I'll play so my audience can see what we're talking about. Um, okay. So obviously, there's like built-in default templates, I guess you could say. But yeah. down the road, you said you guys will be able to offer optional new faces. I guess you could say fake gauge faces. Sure. So right now there's three different uh, digital display formats uh, that you can have. You can't uh, do your own. It has to be one of one of the ones that we, we have preset. And so right now we have three, but just like we're constantly looking forward and, and working to release uh, an Envision Dash that's a direct fit for, you know, the next most popular model out there that people are working on, we're looking at getting, you know, new new models that have smaller screens, bigger screens, um, and then, of course, different display display options, different uh, gauge formats. Um, that's something we're always looking into. And, and like I said, once once those are released, if you bought the unit before those were out, you could just download that update, plug the thumb drive into the side of the unit, and, and upload it, and you would have a completely up-to-date unit like you just bought it that day. Oh, man, that's perfect. Uh, this is kind of like getting maybe a little slightly off-tangent, but a little bit. But back in another life when I worked for – I was in corporate America for a semiconductor manufacturer. I was talking, had a conversation with one of our uh, automotive um, field sales engineers, and I was telling him that, you know what, you guys ought to get with the our LCD department and figure a way of integrating their displays into the OEMs because I, I predict that that's going to be a future. And he's like going, really? And he goes, yeah, trust me. And uh, look what we have here now. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, pretty much exactly exactly what we did. I mean, we've always uh, worked with companies, either developed them ourselves or, or we partnered with companies to help us provide dash panels that, that were a direct OEM fit. Um, but we're working with those, um, with the regular round gauges, I mean, there's just so many different possibilities. Uh, it's tough to give you exactly what you want with this. Um, I mean, the LCD screen just, I mean, that's the future is going to that. Um, we saw that. We tried to jump on it. Um, we think we did a great job with it. But the LCD screen just offers you so much more variety. Um, yeah, so I, more, I think more control. Yeah, like I think I think I I first noticed I think the trend when it was going that direction when you started seeing like more of the hardcore racer types with the race pack displays. But mm -hmm. you know, it's like. Oh, come on, we're at a point now to where, you know, my cell phone has a better screen than a complete, like, green or yellow two-tone monotone display. They could add some color, some additional features into those devices, you know? But that's just me. Yeah, yeah no, and actually, to your point, if I can delve back over to the test equipment. Sure. With our BCT460, which is our tablet tester, and that new BVA360, 
um, if you had included those in, in the video portion, um, that's the exact logic we had behind it was every battery tester was just that old LCD green display with black digits and poorly backlit. And it was like, hey, look at the times. I mean, I've had a smartphone for 10 years. What are we, what are we still using this for until our, our new testers were like, let's, let's make them for the future. Let's get LCD displays on there. The BCT 460, we actually had a partnership with Samsung. So those are Samsung tablets included with those units. Um, the new BVA 360, I mean, it has a, a very easy to read touchscreen and the, those digital displays on the, the testers just give us so much more flexibility with explaining the steps, walking you through the process, um, you know, letting you know exactly what you need to do. I mean, we can include pictures now that show you how the, it should be set up. Um, if there's any issues, we can, you know, show, hey, this could be the issue. Look for this. I um, mean, it just makes it a lot easier for, you know, an inexperienced person to proficiently use the unit. Yeah, definitely on that. Um and definitely looking forward more to that. So if somebody wants to learn more about these products, where can I, where can they go um, on your website? Is there a specific address or? Uh, they can go to our website at autometer.com, A-U-T-O-M-E-T-E-R.com. That'll just take you straight to our, our website that has uh, both our high performance and, and test equipment on there. Um, there'd be tech support and customer service numbers on there if you had questions. Um, we just updated a new to a new website. Um, so we have the phone number in the top left corner that would just get you to the office. And then assuming they kept it from the old website, uh, there was also a form, a contact form in here you could fill out. Um, and then, you know, any questions, of course, you know, I'd be happy to answer if people reached out. Okay, definitely. Um... Or think about me, I'm assuming that would be like a good uh customer service tech support number, you know, that they can reach you out, no, you know, that they can reach yeah, out or get in contact. That, yeah, if they call that number on the website on um, the top left corner, the first question should be uh tech support or customer service. Um and that that comes straight to our, our office here. Um in USA uh Sycamore, Illinois. Um, you know, right next to the factory make all the products here here in the United States and and we handle our own tech support, handle our own service. So you called that it would come straight here to the corporate office I'm standing in right now. Okay. Uh well uh, I don't want to put you on the spot, but maybe when the travel travel becomes a little bit much much easier, maybe there's an opportunity that I could possibly come out visit for a tour, see how things are done for a possible video. Was that a possibility? Yeah, I mean, that's certainly something that, that we could discuss and something that we've done before. I mean, we have factory tours. Um, we have, you know, customers who want to see how everything's done um, before they kind of choose who they want to want to partner with. Um, so we're always happy to, to show people around and show people how, how things are done. Um, you know, we're proud of the products we made, so we're proud of the way we make them. Um, we're not, uh, not scared to show you how well we make them. Well, like I said, it's like, you know, for, you know, I'm a gearhead and whenever I needed a, uh, aftermarket gauge requirement for my needs, it's always been your guys' products, you know. So, uh, it, it, for a product or a company to have name recognition, I think that speaks uh, volumes. Um, yeah. So. When you're talking high performance products, I mean, Autumn is uh, right up there with everyone else. Um, I mean, when you hear automated, you think high-performance gauges. You don't think test equipment, but we're working to change that. Um, but like I said, I mean, we make make high-quality high quality units. We're proud of them. Um, and one thing that we do to back that up is we actually have a service department. So if any of our units, even after the warranty, if any of them are damaged, um, we're always you're always welcome to send them in to us. We'll take a look at them. Um, if we can fix them, we can. if it's post-warranty, we can give you a quote on what the repair would be. Um, if we can't fix them, depending on the situation, we might be able to to offer you a price on a replacement unit. Um, and so we we trust our units. We have full faith in the units, and you know when something goes wrong, we want to make sure we we get it to perform in the way it should be performing for you. And because of that, we uh, we have a great service team. 
Okay, perfect. Uh, well, actually, one last question, actually. We're thinking about one of your other products I noticed. I believe you guys called it a fuel bridge module? Uh, yeah, that's one of the, the new units we have, the, the fuel bridge. Uh-huh. And I was actually I was thinking because there's a, like a little pet project that I'm slowly trying to, in the planning stages, want to do. Basically, what it's going to consist of is driving to uh, every for about 49 states in about seven to eight days. And uh, one of the things that I'm thinking to help make the trip speed along is uh, adding external extra high capacity fuel tanks, and I'm thinking that this module may be something that I could utilize for having two additional tank, fuel tanks in the vehicle and being able to communicate how much each tank if I'm transferring fuel from one tank to another. So I'm wondering if that's a possibility of uh, utilizing that fuel bridge. If uh, I sure. So the, the big thing with the fuel bridge is we have a lot of customers who, you know, they'll be restoring old vehicles and they – they don't necessarily know the own range of their fuel sending unit or uh, the sending unit is just in a place where it's not really easy to, to take out. Um, and then they buy a gauge that doesn't match that own range. Um, so normally that gauge just, it, it wouldn't be work. They wouldn't work. It's, it's not compatible, but, um, you know, with the release of the fuel bridge, now you can hook this up between them. Let's say you have a 240 to 33 ohm gauge and a zero to 70 ohm uh, sending unit, you just program that on the fuel bridge, um, and then the fuel bridge will do the work for you to make that uh, that gauge compatible with that sending unit. So if you had, had gauges for your, your setup already and, you know, didn't want to have to worry about hunting down the, the perfect uh, sending unit to work with those, you know, the fuel bridge would be a, a great alternative for you. Yeah, and I was just thinking about it also, it ran back to the day when I was turning a wrench also for a living of an issue that uh, one of our customers ran into. Um, basically, it was a gentleman who had, like, a first-generation Dodge Viper, and mm-hmm. Carter was the manufacturer, OEM or OE manufacturer for the fuel pump. And on the sending unit itself, and I don't know if you see, it has, it's like a blade-style context, and uh, we noticed that it, you know, Either using fuel stabilization, uh, only having a half tank of fuel that the contacts were eroding. So you contacted Carter, ask him, hey, can we order a replacement of this piece? And they goes, nope, it's obsolete now. So I'm like going, hmm. So I'm wondering if the fuel bridge may be an option of, uh, wiring that into, uh, spec for those customers. Yeah, uh, exactly. I mean, you'll get, get obsolete parts or people want to just keep the OEM, as much OEM stuff as they can on, on their, their vehicles. Um, and so this, this fuel bridge can help you replace less things. Um, plus replacing a fuel sending unit in a vehicle is not a fun task. You got to drop the tank and, you know, mess around with that. Um, it can be long, tedious. And then the worst thing would be going through all that work just for, you know, your gauge and sender to not be compatible and have to, go through all of it at least one more time just to take it apart and then probably again to fix it. So, you know, the fuel bridge stops you from having to do that. If they're not compatible, you don't even have to drop the tank again. Just hook up the wiring from the sending unit to fuel bridge, hook the gauge up to the other end, and, you know, you're good to go. It saves you a lot of work, a lot of headache. And, yeah, you know, it's definitely. an issue we saw a lot of our customers having, so we decided, you know, let's give them uh, an easy solution. And I think you're gonna. I think you have a, uh, a winner there with that product when I was reading the spec specs on it. So that definitely sounds like a. Uh, I think it's gonna be a for at least 2021. I think it'll be a a winner for you guys. So it'll be interesting to have that this conversation in a year or so. Hopefully, uh, back in Las Vegas in person and uh, see how that goes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you don't have to. Uh, you don't have to tell me twice to meet in Vegas. <laughs> Yeah, tell me about it. It's like I have some friends of, uh, well, we can talk a little bit afterwards. So let me, uh, do the, uh, end this recording portion and, uh, before we hang up and, um, let me do my outro. So sure. if, uh, if you're a, uh, watching this, uh, video for the first time or the podcast for the first time, I'd appreciate a, uh, subscribe to, uh, my channel or my uh, podcast. 
hit that like button and share this uh, content out to your friends because YouTube sure isn't. So um, would appreciate that. So till next time, thanks everyone.